Select by attributes allows you to query an attribute table of a particular feature class. It doesn't have to be a spatial feature class. For example, in this case here, we have a farms layer that is, of course, spatial. It's got spatial outlines. But you can also have um, just normal tables, like a coordinate table. These can also be queried with an attributes query. These don't actually have to be spatially represented in your view, although in this case, this particular table does contain spatial data within it, so you can make it a spatial layer. So how does an attributes query work? You're going to query a, an attribute table, which you can access by right -clicking a, clicking a feature class and saying open table, attribute table. You can query this using structured query language or SQL. To do an attribute query, simply go to map. It's one of your basic functionalities. You go select by attributes. And this pulls up your select layer by attribute tool in your geoprocessing panel on the left. This now becomes your interface for building your expressions. The input row tells you what you're going to select from. In this case, I'm going to select from the farm boundaries. And then you also have a selection type. There are various ones. A new selection creates a new selection. If you already have selected something and you do a subsequent attribute query, then you can add to the current selection. You can do something similar by removing from the current selection. So you would have had a previous selection, run a new query, and would have removed the values that were returned from the new query from the previous result. You can still select a subset from the current selection. So you're going to reduce the layers that are, or the entities and instances that are selected. You can switch the current selection so you can go from one selection and switch to the ones that weren't selected before, or you can clear the current selection. Creating a new selection, you will then create a query. Let's say now I'm interested in the farms. Any farm that has a perimeter exceeding 30,000 meters. So I would select per perimeter, so where my perimeter is greater than, and I could say 30,000. And if you run it, you will have a new selection. As you can see, it's now indicated in the light blue. That means those features are currently selected. Let's say now I'm still interested in the farms layer. I would now like to select from this selection. So I would like to narrow it down. Let's say I'm interested in a price that is less than or equal to 5 million. So I can say it's less than or equal to 5 million. And I can run it. And you'll see I only have one current feature selected. So this particular farm, Seferkale, has a price less than 5 million, but also a perimeter that is greater than 31,000 meters. And you can subsequently continue through this. You can now add to the current selection by selecting different parameters. For example, you would like to know an area that is above average. And you'll see now you have increased your selection to 56 out of a possible 126 instances within this feature class. And you can continue with this. You can also say it concatenates queries. You can say where area is above average and the farm name um, begins with, an, for example, an A, or let's say we'd like to start with that, with a K. And I will select based on that, or you can change it to an OR, etc. So there's quite a lot of functionality retained within that. You can concatenate queries, you can build multiples, you can also set this to only um, go to, to SQL. So here you can say area is greater than select average area from farms or farm name is like K and there is your wildcard character indicating anything starting with K, etc. This is a quick introduction to select by attributes using ArcPro.